The problem with that is oftentimes the female voter. You know, you talk about these suburban moms that couldn't stand Donald Trump. They're very emotional voters oftentimes, so they don't like his Twitter feed. They don't like his delivery. They focus on things that media upplays then. Oh, Donald Trump's a bad man. He's not nice. He's not kind. He's not this or that. And for some reason, that winds up taking priority over those safety issues, over those crime issues. So my concern is, are we now emotionally manipulated by media, allowing that to be the case, in large part, by the way, women. Female voters are consistently a problem. It's just a fact. They will consistently vote Democrat, even though those issues don't serve them well, because they've been emotionally manipulated by media to believe that Republicans are just bad people. They're not nice. You wouldn't want to have a beer with them. Ridiculous nonsense. So I look at the next election and I say, is this going to happen again? Are female voters now, these suburban moms, going to step up and vote based on issues and vote a Ron DeSantis in or a Trump, someone like that in? Or are they going to now be told that Ron DeSantis is a bad man and they're going to buy the story and we're all going to be up Shit's Creek? What do you say to that? So, so here's the other problem that we have. And this is more on the Republican side. The, the problem, the independents and Republicans have this challenge. They, they want to change. They think they have to change everyone's mind for their policies to advance. You don't need everybody. So forget about the 47%, the 46%, and the 44%. 44% is going to vote Republican no matter what. 46% is going to vote Democrat no matter what. Let's set those two aside, right? So that leaves us with give or take 10% that we're dealing with, okay? Mm-hmm. 10 or 12% we're dealing with. That 10 or 12% runs America. The 10 or 12% that says, you know what? I can't vote for Biden anymore. I just can't. I'm going to vote for DeSantis. I can't vote for Trump. I'm going to vote for Biden. It's that 10, 12 percent that runs America. It's not the 44. It's not the 46. It's the 10 to 12. So the more the 10 to 12 says, I'm sick of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, for example, Joe Rogan is not part of 46 or 44. Right. Elon Musk is not part of 46 or 44. They were in the 10 or 12 and they went to 44. 44 is what? Republicans. Yeah. So there's a lot of people on the middle now. You, you mean Joe Rogan brings in Aaron Rodgers on his podcast and says, Aaron Rodgers says, what's the solution? He says, vote Republican. Aaron Rodgers starts laughing, meaning the first in, initial reaction of uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers is to laugh. If he wasn't in agreement, he would have said, what? Right. Because he's against it. But if Aaron Rodgers laughs, what is he saying? He's going to vote mm-hmm. Republican. So Musk says vote Republican. Rogan says vote Republican. Musk's got 100 million followers on Twitter, give or take. Rogan's got God knows how many followers he's got. You can't lose those people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we think, like they ask Castro, if you had to do the movement all over again, how many thousands of people would you have needed to be on your side to make your revolution a reality again? He says, one true believer. That's Mm -hmm. all I need. He don't need everybody. So if you have, Elon Musk is a true believer. You lose him, you lose tens of millions of votes potentially. You lose Rogan. You got to listen to that guy three, four times a week. So I know know a lot, like for example, I run a sales organization, right? And many times in sales organization, you sit there and you're thinking, I got to convince everybody to sell this product and I got to convince everybody to do it. I got to convince 100% of my sales force. You need one person that buys in, who's got influence and people follow him. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. So if you ever want to move a sales organization, find out who's got the most influence, convince him or her what product to sell. If she or he sells it, other people are going to follow. So mm-hmm. that person today is Musk. That person today is Rogan, and they're flipping. That's a scary side on the other side. That's not yeah. a good thing. So No, it's not, and there's going to be more like there's that. There's going to be more course. like And by the yeah. way, there's been more like that that we just don't know about. I'm still worried about yeah. the, the suburban moms, and the, I just, I, 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 too many were lost based on emotion. And I, I think that DeSantis think going is away, being played. I don't. I don't. Because yeah. I think what's going to happen with DeSantis is the media is going to use the same playbook they did with Trump. DeSantis has been vilified as some sort of devil. And it's really just going to depend on, do these moms prioritize issues that really relate to their kids? Do they prioritize safety? Do they prioritize freedom? Do they prioritize, you know, living in a place that's not, you know, increasingly crime infested? Mm-hmm. Do they care about these things more than they care about their own emotional reaction to a political candidate? Because they will get that same emotional reaction to DeSantis that they got to Trump. The media will guarantee it. So it's just a question, are they strong enough and strong-willed enough to say, maybe personally, I wouldn't want to sit and have dinner with him, but who cares? 
who cares? I need someone who's going to efficiently get this country back on track. I think that is what remains to be seen. If you want to watch the full episode, you're going to click right here. And if you want to ask me a question one-on-one, -on -one, you want to do a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with a group of your friends, whatever you want, you need to download Minect right now. Click right here and let's get talking.